Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Connect lesson. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving week. I hope you spent some time reflecting on all the ways that God has blessed us and giving thanks to Him for that. Today we are continuing our Gospel Project curriculum in a couple different passages of Scripture. So we're going to be in both Matthew chapter 28 and Acts chapter 1. And in these passages, we're going to start in Matthew chapter 28, but it's going to show us that Jesus commands all of His followers to go and make disciples. Jesus commands all of his followers to go and make disciples. All of us have different parts to play in the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. What all of us have in common is that we are all called to go and to make disciples. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 28 and we're going to start reading in verse 16. This is the word of God. It says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them, to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, we come to this passage that's at the end of Jesus' time on earth. So he's already uh, died on the cross. He's already been raised from the dead. He's already already appeared to his disciples and to some other people. Um, But now we come to this moment that is right before he's going to ascend into heaven. And the first really important thing that we need to see here is what the disciples do. The disciples worshiped him. When they come to this hill, they worship Jesus. Now, the Bible makes it really clear. The only person that is worth worshiping, the only person who is worthy of worship and who it is not a terrible sin to worship is God. So this is a clear claim to the deity of Jesus, that Jesus himself is God. That is so important for us to know. And then Jesus tells them something. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's saying, like, I'm in charge of all of it. I have the right over everything, both in heaven and and on earth. Now he's about to give the disciples a crazy big job, a really, really important job and a really, really difficult job. And so this is going to be really important for them because they can't do it on their own. They can't accomplish this job on their own. They need the authority of the great God creator himself to go with them. It's important for them to know that Jesus is the one that's in charge of all things because from this authority, they are able to go boldly to accomplish the mission that he gives to them. So he tells them, I've got all this authority, so go and make disciples. Go and make followers of Jesus. Just like I made you a disciple, now go and make more people disciples of Jesus. Tell them the gospel. Tell them who I am. Tell them that I am God himself come down as a man to live a perfect life who went to the cross to pay for your sins and then rose from the grave in victory over death and that I'm about to ascend to heaven and have all rule and authority and uh, that, that God sets all things under the feet of Jesus and makes him head over all things and gives him to the church. That, that is the gospel that he sends them out to proclaim. Where? Where are they supposed to go to, to say this? Well, he says, go make disciples of all nations. All nations. That's like That doesn't leave any out. He's saying go uh, not only just like close by and to this select, not only to, to these part, like people of this skin color or people of this cultural background or uh, anything like that. There's no distinctions here. He says go make disciples of all nations. Take the gospel to all nations. And then he gives two little things that this is what that sort of consists of. Number one is baptizing them. So when is someone baptized? Someone is baptized when they're converted, whenever they come to know Jesus, whenever they 
their, their faith is now in Jesus and they've become a child of God. So he's saying, go and you're, you're going to convert people. You're going to tell them the gospel. They're going to respond to it. And then he says, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. So not only are they going to go and make sure people get converted, but they're going to go and teach them and help them to grow as mature disciples. This is what we're called to do. We're, go, we're called to go and preach the gospel and uh, see conversions happen through the power of God, but then we're also called to continue and teach and open up the scriptures and help one another uh, grow into maturity as disciples. And then he says one of the most wonderful verses in all of the Bible. He says, look, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age, I am with you. Now, that's a little confusing because he's literally about to go up into the sky and seemingly leave them. So what is he saying when he says, I am with you always? Well, we're going to get to that in a second, but let's think about this promise. I am with you always. So important for us to remember, because if you're like me, this mission is kind of daunting, like this mission of taking the gospel to other people, of making disciples, that's a little bit scary for me. And yet I can look at this promise of Jesus that he is with me always, no matter what. No matter who I'm taking the gospel to, no matter what difficulty I'm experiencing in this life, no matter what struggle I'm walking through, Jesus is with me. And he promises elsewhere in scripture, he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. He will always be with us, even to the end of the age, until we're done with this mission, he will be with us. Now, he gives a little bit more detail on what exactly that means in Acts chapter 1. So, if you would flip over to Acts chapter 1, and we're going to read starting in verse 8 of Acts chapter 1. It says, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come again in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So, how is, is Jesus going to be with us always? Well, Acts 1 shows us that it's in the power of the Holy Spirit. He would send the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to dwell in us and to empower us as we go out on mission. That's how Jesus is with us always. It's, it's not us going and doing this mission and saving people. It's ultimately God working through us. It's Jesus through us, making disciples, taking the gospel, saving people. And then he gives here a, a more specific sort of layout of, of where they're supposed to do this. So in Matthew 28, he just says, go to all nations. But here it, it records that he said, you're going to start in Jerusalem, which is like right around where they are right now. He says, you're going to go to all Judea and Samaria, which is this whole region that kind of surrounds where Jerusalem is and a little bit north, a little bit south, just uh, th this region. And to the ends of the earth. So big picture, you're going to go far, far away. All nations ultimately are going to hear of this gospel. And you are going to be my witnesses. Witnesses. You're going to be the people that go and tell people about what you have seen. This gospel that you have seen and that you have experienced and that has saved you. You're going to go be a witness to people of all nations about that gospel. And then Jesus ascends. Jesus goes up into the clouds. And Dr. York recently preached on this and it was really, really helpful. So I would encourage you to find his, uh, find his sermon on the ascension at the end of his series on the book of Luke if you have more questions about this. But what his ascension does is it confirms exactly what he said in Matthew 28 when he said, all authority has been given to me. 
Ephesians chapter 1 tells us that, uh, that God worked his power in Jesus in raising him from the dead and then seating him at the right hand of, of, of his throne in glory in the heavenly places and setting all things under his feet and making him head over all things and giving him to the church. This is who Jesus is, the one of ultimate authority. And this ascension proves that, that he goes to be at the right hand of the throne of God. And then what we see at the end of Acts, uh, of this part of Acts chapter 1 is that um, these seemingly angels show up and say to the disciples, look, like, you, you don't have to keep on staring up at the sky. Like Jesus is going to come back. And he's given you a mission in the meantime. Jesus is coming back. But before then, he's going to save a ton of people. And he's decided to use you to save people through the power of the Holy Spirit in you. As you go and you take the gospel and you proclaim it to people of all nations, he's going to use you to save those people. And then he's going to come back. And those people who have responded to this gospel, those people who have put their faith in the work of Jesus on the cross and in his resurrection and his ascension and the fact that he has authority over all things, those people, he's coming back and he's going to take them to live an eternity in paradise with him. Y'all, that is such good news. If you have not responded to that gospel, you don't need to listen to any of the other stuff about uh, going and taking the gospel to others just yet. You need to listen to that gospel and be changed by it. You need to hear that you must put your faith in Jesus to save you from your sins. But if you are a Christian, you share this same commission that Jesus gave to his disciples. You are called to go to share the gospel, to make disciples, not just where you are, but go to where the people are that don't know Jesus and share the gospel with them. That might be down the road to a neighbor's house. That might be to the other side of the world where people have never heard the good news of Jesus. But God is calling each and every one of you that is a Christian to be a part of this mission of taking his gospel to the end of the world and making disciples of all nations. Let's go and be obedient to him. There are discussion questions on Facebook, on Instagram, and on the Buckrun website. I would love for you to go and look at those, talk through them with your family, and we will see you next week for Connect.